Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Richard Blunker from the Puppetum Geek, and today, guys, we're taking a look at the OSVR HDK2 VR headset. I haven't taken a look at a VR game nor a headset for a very long time since the PSVR, and quite frankly, uh, this is my second VR headset being that you know the playstation has been the only one that i was really interested in the hdk2 which also stands for hacker development kit comes at a really great price and if you're looking at getting something like this you're probably looking at other vr headsets as well or you're actually a developer and that's what the osvr headset has come about because it's made really intent for developers and people out there who really want to try a bit of everything but at the same time don't want to buy individual VR headsets. The OSVR is starting to make its mark in the hacker community because it allows users to add different things to it. You can actually add the PlayStation Move controllers to this. You can actually also add the PSI cameras to this as well to get better motion tracking. This does come with a tracking camera though it's not really great. And also, one thing to mention is the actual tripod that you get with it is really bad. I completely threaded it on the first time I got it when I was trying to screw it on um, and I had to use just a regular tripod, which also works as good, but you know, whoever put that in there, chuck that out, get a metal one because that plastic one is shit. <laughs> Uh, other than that as well, you can do so many things with this which allows users to you know, trick Steam into thinking it's a HTC or even Oculus Store thinking that it's Oculus. And again, this goes to the market of developers making it easy to have a headset there. And I have to say, the OSVR HDK2 has one of the best displays that I've ever seen. The one thing I found really difficult was adjusting for your eyesight. It has individual controls on here, which is really great for people who wear glasses, but really tricky to get that mark. Now, if you're the only one using this headset, you know, you can forget it, you can um, set and forget it, and that's it. However, if you're sharing it around, it can take some time to actually tweak it to people's liking, uh, where some other headsets, you know, you sort of move it around and you get that sweet spot. Uh, that works sort of the same, but it's just not on that mark. Other than that, the headset itself is quite lightweight, um, has a decent build to it, and also has a USB port on the side, as I mentioned earlier, to adding additional products to this to make it more beneficial to tracking and also other things which make this headset really valuable. Now, if you're in the market looking at what VR headset to get, the HDK2 is a really great VR headset, hands down. However, you do have to keep in mind that if you really want to expand on those features and, you know, don't mind actually, you know, doing a bit of programming, a bit of, you know, trying to get things to work or tinkering, you know, it's a really great headset. However, if you want something just to sort of just work, I don't think the OSVR um, VR headset might not be for you. It's really great if you're looking into getting into VR developing and all that stuff because it really opens the doors to a lot of things. However, just as a consumer headset, which it's currently going for as it's with its retail packaging, I don't think it's there as of yet. Now, they did do some huge improvements with the installation process by making it just a one-click install, whereas before you had to install like multiple files. It was ridiculous. Um, and I found that sort of a bit tricky as well because straight out of the box, yeah, it tells you to install these things and then sometimes Steam not recognizing it. And that was really frustrating. I found that a really frustrating process to sort of go through. Some people that I've watched online and also have talked to where they've just clicked and installed and it worked fine but then I had to make sure all my drivers were working. I had to go back on some of my drivers as well because you know uh, the OSVR wasn't up to date with some of those drivers. So it's a really a big compatible, uh, compatibility issues uh, with it. One of the things that I really loved about the OSVR is the community. The community is amazing. I had some troubles trying to get some stuff to work with Steam and you know I put something online in a forum and you know in a couple of hours people started asking them helping me out which is really great and saying that as well there's heaps of forums, heaps of tutorials online uh, that allow you to sort of or assist you in getting this working with whatever you're trying to do it with. Uh, and that's something that was a really big help for me, especially when I ran into problems just trying to get it to work with Steam because it wasn't recognizing this or I had to do that. Frustrating process, but at the same time, if you don't mind just, you know, following some simple steps, um, you know, I think it's gonna be a really great headset in the long run. 
Overall, the HDK2 is a huge improvement over last year's model with huge software upgrades as well as hardware. And we've seen the OSVR community grow as well. And one of the things that I really love, and I mentioned it heaps of times, is the family, uh, the inclusion of you know being able to ask for help as well, which is really great. The HDK2 is not just for developers or hackers that may be who love to tinker, but also they're trying to push for, you know, a easy accessible VR headset for everyone. You know, it still has some room to grow. And I think having this sort of retail ready box is really great for someone, especially just starting to get into VR or even getting to developing for VR games. However, for the general consumer, I think it's not there yet. You know, it might need a couple more years, but I think it's heading there, which is really great. Um, you know, the PSVR made a huge leap, I think, making it easily available for the general consumer. And now we're seeing the HTC and the Oculus as well slowly move into that market because they have always been there, but they haven't really been there for the general consumer. You know, unless you started to get into VR, especially with Samsung, you know, pushing their VR headsets, you know, after that you sort of get interested and then, you know, it lures people in to then be like, oh, I want something a bit more. And then they go for the Oculus. I want something a bit more, they might go for the HTC. Now, it's, it's a really weird transition at this moment. And I think with the launch of Ready Player One, we're gonna see VR just, you know, hit the roof and hopefully sky's the limit because I think VR is just at the tip of the iceberg right now. And we can only wait to see what happens with VR, not only for those VR, but you know, every single VR headset out there on the market because having something like this easy available for you know, people and students and everything get their hands on and start doing stuff with it is really great because it only pushes VR as a whole forward. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps this channel out a lot. If you are new to this channel and want to see more tech related videos, don't forget to subscribe as well. If you're in the market for a HDK2 or looking or a bit more, want some more information on it, I'll put some links down below where you can check out the OSVR community and everything where you can actually purchase this thing for yourself as well. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.